Hey guys, what's going on? Today, it's engine installation day. Yeah. Oh. Yep. It's on. And so just like that, we've got air conditioning. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> there was a bit more involved than what I filmed, but basically had to remove the uh, the auto trans cooler just to make a bit of space. Plus, I don't need that anymore. And uh, remove some of the supports and bits and pieces from the front here. And in theory, it should just slide in. So I thought we'd do it now while the engine was out and made it easier to get inside and, uh, and unbolt everything. So... Engine is all together. My RV25 is all assembled, finally. We've got a few bolt-ons on the outside, just manifolds and stuff. The sump's back on, all the time gear is on. I'm super excited because today, we're going to start putting it back into my stager, which is sitting over here, missing a bunch of stuff that's normally there on the front end. So we decided to drop the gearbox to make it a bit easier. And what we're gonna do is lower the engine in here now. I've still got to get a couple of bolts for the uh, clutch pressure plate. Once they come in, then we'll talk those up and we'll lift the gearbox back up and connect it at the back. So, we've got the boys here, say good day. Yo dudes. Hello. So yeah, we're just going to see how far we can get today, but the goal is basically to get the engine lowered into the engine bay and bolt it down to the mounts. So, let's see how we go. Here we go. Ah, oh, true. 17? Yep. Done. <laughs> This mount is sitting on the mount. It's got to come. It's got to up be lifted up. Yeah, that's all right. So at this point, it looks like the driver's side mount was in the way. I'm just going to take that off, get the passenger side mounted up, and then use the crane to lift it back up and sort of twist the motor. The problem with this motor is that it's all-wheel drive, so it's got these shafts off the front, like from the diff um, on both sides. So trying to get it in to line up on both sides is, is uh, tricky. Okay. Now it's already plugged in. Just... Oh, his car, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's on both the mounts. That's technically not on both the mounts. It's sitting on that mount, but it's not on that mount. Technically. It's not on that mount, technically, but it's technically kind of on that mount. Is there the a... bolts are here, yeah. and the holes are here. He's burning what? Keep going. Just bed it in properly. <laughs> Motor's in, bro. Give off shout. Yeah. Motor's in. <laughs> 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 
Today we put in a clutch onto my RB25 and then lifting the gearbox back up into the car as well. All right, let's have a look at the parts that we're putting in. We have our NPC cushion button clutch. We've got uh, some brake cleaner for the flywheel. I'm just using a stock flywheel. I've got uh, ARP flywheel bolts here and I've got ARP pressure plate bolts as well. <laughs> I had to think about that one. Yeah, so in this NPC kit, is the clutch itself and it also comes with a couple of goodies like a new throwout bearing this is a pull type clutch being an all-wheel drive rb so that's the kind of throwout bearing that we need and there's also the aligner and a new spigot bush so that spigot bush or spigot bearing that's different being a manual one so we want to make sure we use this one because most stages came uh, as automatics from factory they have like a different uh, spigot bush on the uh, in the end of the crank so this one is a is a manual one so we'll make sure that we we press this into the crank before we uh, go ahead and try to put uh, the clutch on or anything like that so yeah that's cool that all came in the kit awesome this is for the spigot bush so what we do here is we take a little bit of rag smother it in grease here I'm not gonna do it now because it gets me filthy and then we put that in the hole in the back of the crank and then once we fill it up with about three or four pieces of rag we use this punch fills up the backing behind the spigot and pushes the spigot out. You then take more bits of rag, cover them in grease, and then put them back in there, and then you do this, belt this in more, and then essentially the manual spigot bush will just pop out. So you just stuff them in one at a time, cover them in grease. Cover them in grease. Yeah. Get a fair bit of grease on them. <laughs> I just did my hair. <laughs> on stuff it in the hole. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So that is too much grease. Give your fingers a while. Oh, okay. <laughs> like try that and like, I can't fit that in there. That's what she said. Wipe some of that excess away. So the small end? Yep. Right. Yep. Now pull it out. Stuff more rags in there. Okay. Uh, push that one in. Stuff the rags back in use there. Use that rod. Yep. Need more rags now. Okay. Because you're bottoming out in the crank yep. now. Yep. So the reason why they're sliding out is because this bar is a touch too small. Yeah, right. So they're pushing it out around the side, so you're going to have to go tap, tap, pull it out, go again, mm. readjust it. I'll turn it around. See if the other end fits. Oh, okay, yeah. There you go. Keep going. Oh, oh. yeah. Look at that. Look at it go. Look at it go. Holy sh**. Yeah, boy. <laughs> no way. So you can tap it in with a hammer a little bit while you can still reach oh, it with yep, your fingers. Yep, yep, yep. You can, it doesn't matter if it goes in a little bit crooked at the start because it'll square up anyway. Yeah, okay. How far? Here you go. So the, the, the lips have got to pretty much hit level. They're going to be flush. What if it goes past? Oh, oh, that'll not. be fine. Okay. Doesn't really matter, the gearbox goes in there anyway. Yeah, see, see how that got hard then? Yep. That's because the socket's hitting the lip of the steel around the outside of the... Yeah, right. That's why it's that side socket. There you go. Yep. Yep. Cool. All right, so that's the new manual spigot bush in, replacing the old one. Since everything was apart, may as well do it. And that's, that's kind of become the motto for this engine. While it's apart, may as well replace it or upgrade it. So at least I know that's not going to be a problem with this engine. So that's the manual spigot bush in the end of the crank. Now it's time for sandwich plate to go on the motor, as well as new flywheel bolts and my flywheel which is just drying out the back let's go get that now so i'm using arp flywheel bolts uh the arp directions and a couple of people i've spoken to recommend put a little bit of loctite on the threads of these bolts and a little bit of the supplied arp grease just under the head of these bolts uh put them in with the flywheel and we took them up to 95 foot pounds so we're going to go ahead and do that now oh i'm in the gym <laughs> this way <laughs> So this bolt has the Loctite on the threads, a little bit of ARP grease just under the head there. There we go. So now we just talk those up, right? Yep. In a star pattern, that's all the ARP thing says. Yep. So I'm gonna tighten these to 95 foot-pounds as per the ARP instructions. All right, you ready, Rob? All right, here we go. I'm now going around all the other bolts again. I'm trying to tighten them 
roughly at the same the same rate. I need something to press against. That's what I'm doing. I'm using my, my squatting thighs now. <laughs> you ready? Yep. There we go. That's one. <laughs> Take two of talking to 95 foot pounds. Cool. One flywheel. Bolt it up. Yeehaw. Alright, so here's the new clutch. This is the uh, NPC cushion. cushion. <laughs> Take two. He's gone. Alright, so here's a new uh, clutch that's going in the car. This is uh, an NPC cushion button clutch. And this is very exciting. I've never had a button clutch, let alone a sprung button clutch. So I think it's kind of meant to be the best of both worlds. We'll see. So I'm going to open this up and put it in with the new, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. ARP bolts. ARP pressure plate bolts. I've said that so many times in the last week. So this is just giving the flywheel a quick rub with some brake cleaner to get ready for the new clutch installation. See how fast it evaporates, eh? Mm -hmm. Is that the way it was facing? Oh yeah. Yep. yeah, I get it. Oh, I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, now push the plate on. Yeah. Yep. Cool, and line the pressure plate up. Four slow ones, 10 seconds down. No, rotate it. Rotate it. And like yep. try a different one. Yep, turn it around. Turn it around 30, 30 degrees. Or... Yeah. Hey? No, it's this one here. Doesn't like it. So I felt it go onto that one. Yep. I think that's in the air. Oh, this dowel looks crooked compared to. Oh no. No, it'll go in. Yeah. Alright. Bolts, Robbie. Couple of bolts. Yeah, next one. I can't find the hole. Yeah, let me see if I can get one more here. So now that the clutch is bolted onto the flywheel, the bolts are all just loose. So what I'm trying to do now is line up the clutch so that it's centered on the crank. So the input shaft on the gearbox will be able to slide into the middle of the crank, basically in that spigot bearing spigot bush that we just put in before. So I mean, it looks, it looks almost right. Like I barely have to push up on it. And so what you reckon do up, do three of them up a little bit. Yep. Just nip them up. Oh, okay. I didn't realize it was that easy. <laughs> would that, would that be harder if it wasn't aligned properly? Yep. Yeah, it'd be a little fair bit harder, yeah. Yeah, right. Okay, well that was pretty. So the throw up bearing slides on this way. Line the clutch fork back up in here. Put the pin back through the bottom of the clutch fork. Oh, and that's held in by a split pin, is it? And this split pin here oh. is the one that goes through there. This little ring around through here is what clips into the back of the clutch which is, this is a pull type clutch. And then the slave goes on the outside, obviously. And when we line this back up, this little clip clips into the back of the clutch and holds it together. Beautiful. Gearbox in time, let's go. I'm gonna pull down on that bar. Yep. As in the cross member. Yep. All right, drop that jack. All right, yep. Now pull that cross member. You need to put this jack here. More? Yep. Yep, there. Boom, oh, baby. Bring it back with a little bit, Rob, and spin it, and then come back in. Yeah, go right up there. Push it forward. Yep. Three, two, one, going forward. Wally wiggles. Yep. So, yeah, the guys were here pretty late the other night, and um, yeah, we managed to. To get it in, uh, it took a little bit of jiggling backwards and forwards, but uh, once we lined up the the shaft on the gearbox with the center of the clutch, it eventually finally went in. The real trick with that is to have the gearbox on the right angle in the back. And so I don't know if you can see behind me, we actually decided to lift my car up in the air because it, it wasn't jacked up to the same height as 
the front. The front is up on jack stands, the rear was actually just resting on the ground. So once we lifted the back of the car up and just sat it on uh, some spare wheels that we had, we could kind of line everything up that little bit easier. All right, so all these bolts that hold the gearbox to the engine, most of them are pretty easy to reach and they're all fairly, you know, easy to do up. There's two right at the top that are a pain in the butt though. So one is on this side, this is the, uh, the hot side with the turbo. It's right at the top and the best way I found is to feed it in by hand up here and then go up from the engine bay and reach down with a ring spanner and you can get enough um, space in there that way. But then there's another one that's literally right on the top in the center basically of the gearbox. You can't see it but if you line underneath it right in the center you basically have to put an arm up each side and what I did was hold the bolt with my left hand and then used this monstrosity of an extension with two swivels on it to reach up. All right so here's a better look at the extension setup I needed to get the top gearbox bolt on. It's one of these things that you absolutely need two swivels and like, you know, I've, I've got three extensions and it sort of steps down to a different size. That's only because I didn't have another extension uh, in this size. But right at the end, you need a 14 mil with a swivel on it right there because there's not much room behind that to actually get the socket in behind it uh, because it starts fouling on uh, one of the fins on top of the gearbox. So that is the gearbox firmly tucked away once again. So that's it for this video, guys. Uh, not long left to go, just a couple of things left and then hopefully we can try and start it. See you in the next video. Can you find a zip tie? Oh, 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 in here. I'd love to.